Well, good morning. We hope you're doing well this morning. We are here to worship the Lord in this place. So if you just stand up, bring the rest of your family in on the TV. We're going to worship together, amen? Let's give them all the praise.
Heavenly Father, as we just enter into this last song of worship, Father, we're again just reminded as we just sang of your amazing grace. How sweet the sound. When we sing that out, it's because we know that it's something we don't deserve, Lord, but it's something that you've given us. And we have salvation in you. We have hope in you. And right now in this place, as, as we just enter in and say, yes, I will, to everything that you've called us to be, Lord, as believers in Christ, we come around every single person that's watching, every single person in this community, and say, Lord, wrap your love around them. Give them hope. Give them courage. Give them strength today. And in your name, we will declare victory. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Will I fail me now? You won't fail me now in the way. The same God who's never day is working on things out. Working on things out. Oh, yeah. And yes, I will get to high. I love this valley. And yes, I will miss your name.
Heavenly Father, as we continue with our service again, we choose to praise you, the King of kings on your throne. It is for your glory that we sing, your glory that we praise, Lord. We love you and we thank you for this time of worship in your holy name. Amen. church. Can I just remind you, church is not a building. The church is still alive. Scripture declares that you and I are the church because we have the very presence of God living inside of us. So welcome to church today. And I'm so excited that God is meeting with you right where you are today. Did you know that the early church actually started in homes? So we're just getting real today. We're just continuing to follow Jesus because that's where we're at we're meeting in homes today and we're worshiping and we're praying and we're being encouraged why because you and me we are the church so welcome to church today it's good to connect with you and I, I really believe I have a word that is going to encourage you but I hopefully also challenge us and, and to cause us to think a little bit different today you know we're in this series that we're calling fresh air the idea is that everywhere we go, God wants us to be a breath of fresh air. He wants us to spread hope. And as I was thinking about today's message, I thought about the first missions trip that I ever went on. It was in El Salvador in Central America. And I remember how the missionary took us one day to the poorest part of the city. It was actually called the slums. And I had never seen poverty like that before. It, it even impacts me today. I, I can picture some of the shacks that these people lived in i mean they were just trying to survive so anything they could find anything they could gather to put a roof over their head they did it it was cardboard it was sheet metal it was a just extreme poverty the other thing i remember is their water they didn't have fresh water so they had to use sewer water to bathe in and to cook their food in and i remember the missionary telling us how a lot of people would die from the bacteria or just get sick it, it was not a good experience and the other thing I remember about that that moment was the smell I remember getting off of the bus and just the cement the smell was horrendous it just smacked me upside the head and I almost gagged and some of you could probably tell I guess I have a weak stomach but I had to get back on the bus just to get a breath of fresh air but I remember how our team members would just love on the kids who came running up to them they hand out candy to them they did something small but it really made an impact it really made a difference in the lives of those kids and even the parents that that gathered around see that's the idea god wants you and i to be a breath of fresh air and so last week we said it starts by just being motivated by grace how do we go the extra mile how do we love people and serve people and help people we just have to remember everything that Jesus has done for us. Remember, we don't deserve anything, but out of God's love and out of God's grace, he gave us good things that we don't deserve. He gave us Jesus. And how many of you know Jesus is enough? If we have Jesus, that's just what we share with people everywhere we go because he's the hope of the world. I still believe that. So we have to be motivated by grace. But the thing that I want to talk about today is this idea here that we also have to mirror great lives. It's one thing to be motivated by grace, but we have to follow and copy and imitate the right people. Because Paul writes about this, believe it or not. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. I encourage you to go ahead and grab your Bible. I know you, you have it right there by your bedstand or on your coffee table. Come on, grab it, get your tablet, your smartphone. Open up your YouVersion Bible app, 
1 Thessalonians chapter 1, starting in verse number 5. Listen to what Paul talks about mirroring great lives. He says, And you know of our concern for you from the way we lived when we were with you. And then in verse 6, he says, In this way you imitated both us and the Lord. So what's Paul talking about? If we're going to be a breath of fresh air, we need role models. And we need mentors in our life. I mean, think about your life for just a minute. A lot of people have influenced you, haven't they? In a lot of ways, you are who you are because of the people that you've surrounded yourself with, the people that have rubbed off on you. I mean, the way we talk, the way we think, the way we look, look at our world, it's, it's largely determined and influenced by the people in our lives. I mean, our grandparents and our parents could be our brothers and sisters. They've made a difference in our life, haven't they? They've impacted us. We could say that the same with friends and maybe coworkers, people that we, we just work with and are surrounded by. They influence us. And the thing we have to keep in mind is this, as people, we imitate others. I mean, that, that, that's what we do. We, we look at the people in our life and we copy them. I mean, think about it. Some of you, again, we laugh at this. You look at your high school yearbooks and you look at your hairstyle. And I can bet that some of you can tell me you were trying to copy somebody. Maybe it was a popular movie star. Maybe it, was a, maybe it was an athlete. How many of you remember Brian Bosworth's hair? Some of you are as old as me. You remember his hair. You, you youngins, you can look it up on, on YouTube or Google it. It was crazy hair. But I remember how even some of the kids in my high school got his hairstyle. They, they imitated him. Because that's what we do as people. We imitate others. We copy them and scripture even talks about this listen to these words in hebrews chapter 13 verse 7 it says remember your leaders who taught you the word of god think of all the good that has come from their lives and here's the sentence focus on this and follow the example of their faith see everything we learn whether good or bad it's influenced by people and so God, again, has called you and I to be a breath of fresh air, to spread hope everywhere we go. He's asked us to be change agents. And the way we do that is we have to model great lives. We have to mirror great lives. Now, here's the encouraging thing. We don't have to be original, meaning we, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Just be who God's created you to be. You don't have to force anything. Just allow God and his spirit to work in your life and to give you wisdom and who to copy and who to imitate and who, and who to, to live like. So who, who should we look to? That's the question today. Who should we look to? And I think since Paul wrote 1 Thessalonians, let's start with him. He's a great example of, of a mentor and a role model. And just look at his life for a minute. How, how, can we, how can we be a breath of fresh air? How can we mirror great people? Well, here's the first thing to consider. We need to look to people who are ahead of us. That's what the Thessalonians did. One of the reasons that the Thessalonian Christians were so successful is they just watched Paul. They looked at his life, and they imitated him. They copied him. And that's, that's wise. We should do that as well. I mean, let's look to people who are stronger in areas that we want to improve in. Because the truth is this, someone's always ahead of us. We can always learn from somebody. We can, we can always look to somebody. We can always copy someone who's ahead of us. And so just again, think about your life. Maybe it's your marriage. You want to have a stronger marriage. Maybe it's your finances. You, you just feel like you want to be a better steward and manager of the blessings that God's put in your life. Maybe it's parenting. Maybe it's your health. I don't know what it is, but somebody is always ahead of us. And so what do we need to do? We've got to humble ourselves. We need to go to those people, ask them for help, ask them questions, and allow them to pour into our lives. Because here's the truth. The truth is this. God uses people 
to help us live in freedom and to help us grow in our faith. I mean, some of us, we need to be free in certain areas. And the truth is this, God will set you free through people. We got to look to the right people though. And, and we all hopefully want to grow in our faith. And so we need to look to people who are ahead of us. You know, I was thinking about this because I like sports. A lot of you knew I, I grew up with brothers. We, we were always doing something sports related. And I don't know if you're, you're, if you're like me, how about comment below? I'm watching all kinds of sports reruns, like the 1986 World Series and everything else, right? Brings back some memories. I can reminisce. But I was thinking about athletes. You know, one of the things that make athletes great is they don't play down to their competition. They don't surround themselves with, with weaker talent. They look to people who have a skill set that they admire they look to people who they consider are better than them, and they try to compete against them. They try to practice against them. They try to play against them because they understand that somebody who is further ahead than they are can help bring them up to a different level and, and can help them be, be greater at what they want to do. Think about this quote. It says this, you need to hang out with people who fit your future, not your history. And I think too many times as people, we're guilty of looking to our past. We're, we're guilty of looking to our mistakes and our failures. We're, we're guilty of looking to our regrets. And a lot of us, we, we even talk bad about ourselves. We just don't think we're adequate. We don't think that we're qualified to do what God has called us to do. But the truth is this. Scripture declares that God has a hope and a future for your life. And so if you're a follower of Jesus, you have a future. And that's what God wants you to look to. That's, that's what God wants you to focus on. How can you make a difference right where you are with everything that God has put into your life? And the truth is this, though. You have to look to people who are ahead of you. The second thing that we need to do is look to people who know how to persevere. You know, I learned this early on. And I'm sure you did too. Talk's cheap. It, it's easy to talk a good game. But I don't want to just surround myself with people who talk. I want to look to people who have been through some stuff. Who have experienced some hard times and some difficulties. But how they've come out on the other side. That's who I want to look to. That's who I want to allow to encourage me and pour into my life. And the Thessalonian Christians, they did that. They looked to Paul because they knew he had been through some stuff. I mean, you think about it, he, he spent three Sabbaths in the synagogue preaching and teaching, and then a mob was created. They wanted to kill him. And so Paul had to be evacuated from the city. He, he, in a sense, he had to run for his life because the people in Thessalonica, they wanted to kill him. That's suffering. And, and the Christians there knew about Paul. They knew about everything that he had endured and they looked up to him they admired him and they copied him and that's what we need to do we need to look to people who know what it's like to persevere and i want you to just think about this what does persevering involve well again let's look at paul for just a minute persevering involves sacrifice and paul did that everywhere he went he was willing to sacrifice for the gospel he cared about people he prayed for people he preached to people god used him to to do some pretty great miracles and he healed people i mean paul sacrificed and because he sacrificed he was a breath of fresh air i mean think about what scripture says scripture says that paul knew what it was to be without things it says that there were times where he was hungry and had no food there were times where he didn't have adequate clothing. The Bible says he was naked. There were times where he was in prison for preaching the gospel. And we ultimately know that he sacrificed his life for Jesus. And in a lot of ways for you and for me, because that's what people who persevere do. They sacrifice. And then understand perseverance involves serving. Again, that was Paul's heart. Everywhere he went, he served and he put people and their needs 
before his very own. And listen to the words that he writes in Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. He talks about serving. He says this, Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone. And that's exactly what Paul did, and the Thessalonian Christians knew that about him. And it influenced their lives, and it impacted them. In a lot of ways, what Paul's example helped change the city and helped a lot of people come into a relationship with Jesus. So perseverance, it involves sacrifice, it involves serving. And the last thing I see is perseverance involves sharing your life. And that's what Paul did, not only with the Thessalonian Christians, but he's still sharing his life with you and I today. I mean, the New Testament is mostly comprised of Paul's letters to different churches and to different people. And you just think about the, the wisdom that Paul shared with people. Think about the truth of Jesus and just the truth of the gospel that Paul shared with Jesus. That matters. That makes a difference. But think about how Paul not only shared his successes, he also shared his failures. Because scripture also talks about how Paul admitted that before he came to faith in Christ, he, he says this about himself, that he was the chief of sinners. He talks about how he persecuted the early church and led a lot of Christians either to prison or to their death. And he thought he was doing the right thing. But it wasn't until he was on the road to Damascus that Jesus appeared to him. And Paul's life was saved and Paul's life was changed. But people who persevere, they share their life. And you and I, we need to do that. But we also need to look to people who are willing to do that. So, so, so what do we do to be a breath of fresh air? We look to people who are ahead of us. We look to people who know how to persevere. And lastly, we do this. We look to people who point to Jesus. And I really think that's most important. Because understand this, people will let us down. People aren't perfect. They're going to make mistakes. They're going to fail us. But can I remind you, Jesus is the perfect role model. He'll never let us down. He'll never fail us. And I ultimately believe he'll never disappoint us. And so we need to look to Jesus. So can we learn from people? Yes. Can, can we allow people to rub off on us? Yes. But here's the caution. We should never put people before Jesus. We should never put somebody ahead of Jesus. Because here's what we do sometimes. We put people in places in our life that they were never intended to be in. And do you know what happens when we do that? We're disappointed. Have you ever been disappointed by somebody? I know I have. And if I'm honest with myself, I can, I can admit to you that some of the reason I, I was disappointed by somebody is because I was looking to them to do something for me that only Jesus himself could do. I think we're all guilty of that. And, and so we need to look to people who love the Lord, who aren't afraid to stand up for what is right, who aren't afraid to speak the truth in love. That's who we invite into our life. That's who we look to. That's who we try to copy and imitate. And let me leave you with this and we'll pray. Spencer Kimball said this, God does watch over us and does notice us, but it's usually through someone else that he meets our needs. And again, God wants to bless you. God wants to work in your life. God wants to meet needs because I believe that I'm talking to some people today that have needs. And can God do things supernaturally? Absolutely, because he's God. But here's what we need to remember. Don't dismiss this. God often meets needs through people. He uses people. And how many of you can admit that the people that God's used to meet needs in your life, you would say they were a breath of fresh air. They helped encourage you in some way, and they helped him spread, spread hope in some way. 
And we need to thank God for those people. And then we ourselves need to turn around and say, God, how can I do that for somebody else? Because understand, somebody's watching you. Somebody's looking at you. Somebody's listening to the words that come out of your mouth. They're listening to how you interact with people. You are influencing people, whether you realize it or not. And my prayer is this, that when people look at our life, they don't see us, but they see Jesus. And because of that, we can encourage them, we can spread hope, we can be a breath of fresh air. So church, right where you are, would you just bow your heads? I want to pray for you. I want to ask the Lord to just comfort you and encourage you. You know, this, this road that we're on, this journey that we're on, with social distancing, it seems to get longer and longer. But we're going to make it to the other side. Let me pray for you. Father God, I just lift up your people wherever they are today. I thank you that your spirit is there with them. I ask that you would comfort them, encourage them, and give them strength. I pray, God, that you would give them wisdom for decisions that they need to make. And Lord, ultimately, would you just help us to mirror great people? Thank you for the people you've put into our life that can influence us and shape us and point us in the right direction. And God, we, we just love them. We thank, thank you for, for the blessing that they've been to us. But God, ultimately, we want to be those kind of people as well. We want to make a difference for you. We want to impact our world and impact our community. We want to impact the places where we live. And so God, help us to be a great example to our friends, to our family, to our neighbors. God, let your light and your love and your presence shine through us so that people don't see us. They see you. And we can share hope with them. God, bless your people. Meet the needs that they have. Minister to them. Those that need healing, God, we lift them up before you today. We still declare and believe that you are the great physician, and we ask that you would just touch them right where they are. Bless your people, we pray in Jesus' name. Hey, we love you guys. We're praying for you. The best is yet to come.